Well this is another one of my tropical garden videos and I hope you really find it uh, useful and to some extent enjoyable. Thank you very much for watching. Good morning. It's about half eight here in Thailand. The weather is great. It's, we've had about three, four, five weeks of red hot temperatures. It's, it's been almost unbearable. Um, I'm one of those against air conditioning, but my god, I think we needed it this past month or so. Anyway, we had a bit of rain last night, it's been a little bit unsettled the last two or three days, and the temperature seems to have dropped. So now I feel confident enough to sit outside and show you how to repot or pot up cryptanthus, which are called bromeliads. And the one we're going to be concentrating on is this little beauty, and this is called Pink Starlight. And as you can see, it's um, get a bit closer, it should automatically refocus this thing. I've sadly neglected it. Very bad husbandry. Very naughty of me, actually. So, that's what we're going to do. Repot this. I just thought I'd show you briefly four of my favourite Earth stars, as cryptanthers are known as in the English world, so to speak. They really are lovely plants. Pink starlight, which is hanging on the bromeliad tree, gets an awful lot of uh, sunshine, direct sunlight, probably this time of year, three hours, maybe four hours a day. And it doesn't seem to bother it too much, but it only gets the sun uh, mainly during the wet season, which is now, so it gets damped down every so often. Yeah, I, I really like this. This, this, is, this one needs um, repotting. But I'll just show you if we can come down here. Underneath, coming out of the drain hole, are two species of fern growing. So I don't want to disturb anything. I think that's rather nice. And if they grow to be quite large, it could be an interesting little feature, all of that. So there we are. Well, here are the ingredients I'm going to be using for compost. Uh, to put up the, the offsets off of this um, cryptanthus. Charcoal, um, coconut, so we've got charcoal and coconut. This is chopped up, diced up coconut. It's ideal, except that after a year it gets waterlogged, so we have to mix it with something else. Now the charcoal keeps the soil sweet and bark here, this bark is from our own tree at the front of the garden, a large native tree, which just peels off and drops to the ground, which is ideal. And then across here we have here broken pottery, old pots, um, ideal. You know, you don't need too much of it, but that, that is ideal, crocking is ideal. So there's my four main ingredients, no soil. Okay. Now we've got that compost, we've got the charcoal, we've got the coconut, we've got chopped bark and we've got um, broken uh, crocs or uh, clay pots that have fallen apart or whatever. So we've got all the stuff there, a couple of pots. Now the pots here, um, these are good. Uh, the base is a, bit, a little bit narrower for me actually but they're okay for, for just a single plant and um, this can be put on the ground or you've got three ports there for putting hanging wires on so you can hang it up um, you hang it sort of quite low so that you can see look down on the plants because these these plants <coughs> excuse me are sort of um, they, they like shade dappled shade or a little bit of sun uh, and and a heavier shade, that sort of thing. Um, they're understory plants. Uh, so there's that, that type of pot and this one uh, with the, um, the holes in the side. Now this, this again is good this is good for hanging. These are excellent. And, and these particular pots with, with the air holes in are really sort of more, more for orchids than anything else. But because Cryptanthus tend to rot very easily you, you must have something free draining and, and this allows the air to come through as well so you know the compost dries out a bit quicker which 
means you have to water more but if you have it in a shade house with ferns and um, uh, orchids uh, and other bromeliads then you're watering it virtually every day anyway so it's no problem but these pots are a little bit too small ah, right let's mix up some compost now half a bucket a bit less than half a bucket of this um, chip coconut to that I will add perhaps a couple of handfuls of that the old bark and a few lumps of charcoal don't want it too big, any big stuff just break up. This all helps to, the charcoal keeps the soil sweet and the crocs help to keep the soil open. So just, you don't need to be, need to be fussy about it, just turn it over, you know. You, Nature never made things perfect, so why should we? <laughs> you know, people talk about you shouldn't water in sunshine. Well, nature does, you know. Your lovely sunny day and there'll be a shower and the sun's still out, so... <laughs> what the heck? So, here we are. Here's the old compost. I do like sitting down when I'm working. <laughs> the bones aren't what they used to be, I'm afraid. Right. Be brutal. <clears throat> there we are. Now, as you can see from that, there's very little root system. There we are, look. See, so they don't need tons and tons of soil, but they do need wide pots because they spread laterally, sideways, laterally is sideways. Now here's the old, here's the old pot, I'll just show you that because here I've used mainly soil, uh, and more as an experiment and, and that, that is a mistake because that is too damp. So that's going in the garden. There we are, fresh from the wash. You don't get Jay's fluid here, or I've never seen any, <laughs> anyway. So, here we are then. This is easy to pick through. You see, you've got the... We have the, the parent plant and the, what they call pups for some reason. I guess it's an Americanism. I can't see what's puppy about that, can you? I would have called it an offset, but... Uh, in uh, familiar speak, they're pups a little bit from that. No, that was quite productive. We have six, five plants here, parent plants, which I'm going to uh, pot up in a plastic pot and shove them in a the shade house out of the way and just see what happens to them. They, I should get more offsets off of those. So we don't throw them away unless they actually die because when they flower Many bromeliads that in fact die afterwards and the, and the pups or the offsets carry on with the species but some do, some don't. Is it? <laughs> so some species do, some don't. They, they just, you know, you get the one species, one year it'll do so and so, the next year it'll do something completely different. So there you are, it's bromeliads. And the offsets, here we are. Pups, sorry Mr America, pups. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right now, as with most, oh, an actual fact, that one is not a pup, but it's a parent. Now, as as with most um, plants, uh, you, up, up until about ten or eleven plants, you plant you know, in odd numbers otherwise it's out of balance. So I'm going to use this big pot 
uh, which I've now washed or rinsed anyway. And I'm going to pot up as many of these offsets as I think fit that look right in this pot, allowing for them to grow and then to have pups. So ideally, I, I would think five would be okay for that. Ideally, but is it an ideal world? <laughs> we ask this ourselves. So, here we are. Here's our compost. Just like that. Just like that, Tommy said. Tommy Cooper said that. Just like that. Now I'm going to move this here. Tilt this down here, like this, here. And then, we shall plonk them in, and I mean plonk. You can because the mixture is so light you can it doesn't matter if you bury the bottom leaves a little bit you know so what did, what did I say five wasn't it so we've got varying sizes here so it's a good idea I'll kick small ones for the small parts makes sense doesn't it there's four And one in the middle. Now, just move the compost around a little bit. It's, it's nice and heavy, this compost, but if they're wobbling around too much, just put a, a few bits and pieces of broken pottery around it. Up to just weigh it all down a little bit. And water that. I already pre soaked the, the coconut. I'll do that with all, all the plants. I, I, in fact, I keep a bag around the back and I'll just pour water in it. It stinks after a week or two, so you've got to use it fairly quickly. But yeah, that's the, the general idea. Now that should be absolutely fine. Now where shall I put it? For the time being, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to... For the time being, I'm going to put it where my yellow foot is. Because this here, it's semi-shade and it doesn't get too hot and because because I sit down here every day I'll be able to keep an eye on it so there we are boys and girls ladies and gentlemen and these little ones I've just put up in those little pots so that's really it so if you enjoyed that if that was helpful to you at all um, perhaps you'd like to go to my web page uh, Dell's Gardens or if you go to my YouTube channel either way there's more stuff on gardening there's more stuff on other stuff and things anyway hope this is use useful to you if it was please click the su subscribe button thank you very much folks bye happy gardening thank you for watching this video and I hope you will watch more in the future thanks once again